Last week, my son told me this really interesting thing that I just had to wrap my head around. And when he told me, the Lord really put it on my heart. This is what you're going to talk about next. And I thought that was a little weird because I'd never really thought about it. So what my son said, a little bit of context, I was speaking about communication and how people don't communicate. And he told me very matter of factly that people don't communicate like me and that he doesn't know anyone that communicates better than me. And I was really taken, taken aback by this because I never thought of myself as a good communicator. So I asked him a few questions trying to understand what it was that he was really referencing. And I realized that it's one of those things that if you're always the one doing it, then why would you not assume everybody else communicates the same way as you? Um, it's kind of like if you're colorblind, you don't realize it. And I've had things happen where I thought everybody else experienced things the way I did. And it was in my teens before I realized that that was not true. So I was very confused by this. And I, I prayed about it a little bit. And I kept coming back to Kintsuki. So Kintsuki, I think I'm saying it right. It's this Japanese art form where basically they take something that is broken. I have a few pieces over here. Um, something that is broken and they repair it with lacquer and gold. So this is like a little little box that I kept my frankincense and myrrh in and I dropped the lid and broke it. So I kind of put it across on my counter to, to repair it in this style. And I wasn't really entirely sure why the Lord kept putting that on my heart, but as I was praying about it, I started to understand what he's really talking about. I'm going to give you another example. I'm going to show you Mr. Goldbottom. This is Mr. Goldbottom. He is now a part of our family. I collect um, things for my children. Um, I sell antiques and whatnot. And when there's something that I think my kids will like, I end up giving it to them, obviously. And this was actually a bear that my son, my 19-year-old, liked a few years ago. And he dropped it. And if you look really closely, you can see that the entire bottom, well, not, not, it didn't go all the way across, but, you know, big chunks of it broke off. It's hollow on the inside. And I felt really bad because he really liked this bear. He thought it was a cool bear and I felt really bad. So I thought, let me try. So this is my attempt at Kintsuki. Now, um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, in a minute, but I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what it is that Kintsuki is. This idea that a piece of pottery is actually more beautiful after it's been repaired. So this is another piece. You can't see it here because I haven't add, added the gold yet, but if you look up here, you see there's these big openings that are left in there that I have to repair. But the, the side of this came off and I just liked it so much. I have a ginger jar that goes with this and I, I just felt bad that I broke it. It fell over um, and just, and it broke. So I, I put that aside. I started to repair that a while back. So I have a couple pieces that I'm going to fix in this style. And so I'm going to go over kind of how to do that. Before we get started on everything else that Kintsuki and communication have to do with one another, I'm going to give you a little bit of what we're going to use. So I don't have the money for um, actual gold powder, which is what is in, in authentic Kintsuki. It is lacquer. Lacquer would be what holds the pieces together. And then they will put this fine um, gold dust on to really accentuate the brokenness. And it's, it's beautiful. It's this wonderful art form. I just love it. It's so, it just speaks to me on what God does for us, right? So obviously I don't have that. Um, this I actually repaired with gold mica powder and I made that into a, because there's pieces, if you, if you look here, there's actual chunks of it that are missing that I couldn't find. Um, so I had to actually mold that area to Put it back together. I don't have to do that this time, so I'm going to actually use something else. I'm using um, this is liquid gold leaf, and instead of regular gold leaf, which you have to put on with some glue, and then you you know put the leaf on and you shake it off, and then you 
put some other sealer on top of it, which we could do that. You could do that. But I just, I like this. It's very easy to apply with a brush. So that's what we're going to use. But I'm also going to use baking soda, which is amazing stuff, right? And super glue. Some toothpicks. And just an empty lid. I saved these because, well, I can't be trusted with Tupperware. So I save my glass jars to use and I throw them away whenever they get, um, whatever. I forget them in my car, whatever. So I, I just save these. You, you can use whatever. I would use something that's metal or glass, though, because you will be using this and you want to throw it away afterwards. You're not going to be able to use it again. I've used a uh, tin foil where I just kind of folded it together so that it would be easy to throw away and clean up when you're done. Now, I will recommend using gloves, but I'm not going to because the gloves kind of stick to everything and they tear. But it's probably better if you use gloves so you don't get your fingers together. Anyway, so those are the materials that I'm going to use. It's very easy. Oh, no, that's that's a lie. I have paint brushes. <laughs> well, not not these. I have finer ones, but you definitely want to use a something fine to paint the liquid gold leaf on if that's what you're going to use. So, okay, so what does that have to do with communication? I was very confused by this. I was like, well, I don't understand. What are, what are you trying to tell me here, Lord? And it's something that I never really thought about because what makes me a good communicator? And I, I really thought about this. And I was like, why does my son think this about me? And it's not the first time that I've heard this. But I have been accused of not being a good communicator. So I was thinking about the times that I was and the times that I wasn't, what was different and all these all of these things. So I started reading the Torah portion for this week. I actually have my son's Bible because that's just what's downstairs and that's where I'm at. And I came to a section that's funny because I actually wrote a book entitled this and um, I'm waiting for line editing to be done um, before I publish it because, you know, my grandma and whatnot. But um, the title of the book is found in this section of the Torah portion. So I'm going to read a little section and I, I want you to be patient because there is a reason that I'm tying all of this together. So the section that I'm reading, and you can go and you don't have to follow the Torah portion that I follow, obviously, but um, I do follow the Torah portions and the gospel and the prophet portions. But this week's, I think it's this week's, let me just fact check that. Yeah, Exodus 25 through 27, 19. Um, my phone. Uh, so in Exodus 25, it's talking about them making uh, the mercy seat, um, the ark. Right? But I'm going to skip down a little bit to kind of go over um, the part that I want to uh, go over. And, um, you know, this section is talking about the offerings to build the tabernacle. So let me just go over a little bit that the offering is supposed to be um, whoever wants to. Right? This is whatever they're willing to give. But the instructions on the mercy seat are very specific. And um, so I'm going to go into that starting in verse, I'm going to start with 15, but that's a little further back than I need. The poles are to remain in the rings of the ark. They must not be removed from it. Put the tablets of the testimony that I will give you into the ark. Make a mercy seat of pure gold, 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Make two cherubim of gold. Make them of hammered work at the, end, at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end. At its two ends, make the cherubim of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim are to have wings that spread out above it, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and are to face one another. The faces of the cherubim should be toward the mercy seat. Set the mercy seat on top of the ark and put the tablets of the testimony that I will give you into the ark. I will meet you there above the mercy seat between the two cherubims, between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony. I will speak with you from there about all that I command you regarding the Israelites. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? <clears throat> well, let me explain. I'm gonna skip to the end because it's just too much for me to try to explain the process because my process is a little long and involved. So anyway, but what I came to when thinking about Kintsuki and how I communicate, 
what I came to is that what makes me a good communicator is that I am not talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your spirit. I'm talking to your spirit. I'm of the spirit. You're of the spirit. I don't care about your flesh. I want to know the truth. I want to know you. Okay? So what does that have to do with Kintsuki? Right? Then people can be frustrated with me because I ask so many questions. And sometimes they're offended because my questions go deeper. Okay, so let me explain. And I'm going to use this vase, even though it's not broken right now because I did already start this project. But this whole section, well, right at the top, was, was off. Okay, so let's imagine that this is you. Okay? And you're broken. Right? And people see this. And they see this. And they see what used to be and what is now. And sometimes you're in pieces, right? You're broken. But that's not what I talk to. That's this, this, this part, um, this part, right? That is the flesh. This, what's in here, that's in the spirit, right? People are focusing on here and not focusing on what's inside. So with Mr. Goldbottom, yes, we do actually call him that on a regular basis. So Mr. Goldbottom, there was a hole, right? And so I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that this is the first piece of Kintsuki I've really did um, because it's in the form of a creature and not a vase, okay? Because I think this is a better depiction. So it's hollow on the inside. Everybody sees this. Everybody sees this. That's all they ever see, right? And, and you know, they talk about the eyes being the windows of the soul, right? And what comes out of you, right? This, what's inside of you is what matters, right? But we don't always get to see that. We don't get to see what's inside. Not often. But when you're broken, you can. Just a little bit. It's what allows you to see the beauty inside of you, right? And Yeshua promised to give us a new spirit and a new heart. So, well, I think that was in Isaiah. A new spirit and a new heart so that you can sin no more, right? Is that Isaiah? I can't remember where it's at, but um, you can look it up, okay? But the point is that I'm talking to what's inside of them and not the brokenness. And so when I ask questions, it's because over the years, I wish I had a band-aid or something, but let's just say, um, I don't have any towels here, um, but let's say I had a, um, a band-aid, right? And I know that there's this gaping hole here and I just cover it up. I'm using my hair, okay, because that's what I got. So um, I cover it up and I don't let anyone see that. You know, because that's, that's, mm, that's vulnerable and that's tender and that's painful, right? And it's a weak point because it's the flesh, right? But I ask questions that remove that. Because I want to see what's inside. Now, I was accused many years ago, well, maybe it wasn't that many years ago, a couple years ago, that... I look for information on people so that I can control them or manipulate them. That was pretty much what was implied. I corrected the person. And that's not true. I want to know them so I can love them, right? And um, that's kind of what my son was talking about. I had a friend say to me recently that they, they didn't feel like they would be judged or pushed or anything. They could share things with me because of that. And I've told people in the past where they um, thought I was judging, I mean, and sometimes I was, so I admit that. But that was important, because I'm not looking at the flesh. I'm not looking at judging that they're broken. I don't care that they're broken at all, but I do see that it's there. So when I ask these questions, I say, oh, what's that? Okay, well, why are you covering this? And, you know, what, well, why does that hurt you? And I ask these questions, and it slowly reveals this it's crack. That's painful. That's shameful. They hide. People hide. And it's been going on since the garden. It's been going on since 
Adam and Eve covered themselves when they sinned, when they ate of the apple, hid themselves. So now this comes to the, to the cherubim. Let me explain what happens and why this goes with that. Between the mercy seat, uh, between the cherubim, that's, that's the title of the book I wrote, um, between the cherubim's wings, I believe is what I said. I have to look at it, but it's between the chair. Anyway, um, but uh, when we see somebody and they see us facing each other, okay? So if I'm looking at this vase, and this vase is a person, I'm a person, right? Well, just pretend, okay? And if I'm looking here, I'm not looking at them. I'm looking at what the world has said that they are. Because this isn't us. You know, Yeshua, um, he said, and I'm going to find this. Give me a second. I'm actually going to pause this and come back. Okay, I'm back. I found it. Mark 12, 25. Now, this is a different Bible. This is the Christian Standard Bible. That's my son's. But I'm using this, this app here. Um, so, in Mark 12, 25... Yeshua says, for when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Now, this is referencing um, the questions of who would a woman be married to um, if she was married seven times because her spouse kept dying, right? Um, and Yeshua says, are you, um, are you not therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? He's talking to the Pharisees that or whoever had asked him but this was the question of well who should who would she belong to as a wife see this 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 is just for here guys you don't understand that it's this what what's inside of us our spirit our soul that is only it only has the this earthly identity why on earth Okay, so everybody else is talking to this. I don't want to talk to that. I'm not interested in your flesh. I'm interested in your spirit. So I'm asking these questions because I recognize that there's a hole in your in you, right? And I'm like, what is going on? Why is this here? What has happened? So let's imagine I'm talking to Mr. Goldbottom and I'm just witnessing him. Okay, and I'm going to say, okay, I see him just as he is. All right. And, but I see not this, not the brokenness, but what's inside. This is created the same situation that is on top of the mercy seat. Okay, so the two cherubim are facing each other, looking at the mercy seat. They're between them is where God's gonna come talk to you. This is the power of a witness, right? People talk about being a true and faithful witness. This is what it says about Yeshua, I believe, in the book of Revelation. He's a true and faithful witness. We are supposed to be true and faithful witnesses of each other and of God. Um, so we can be a false witness with someone when we see them wrong. When we see, oh, you're broken here, and that's judgment, guess what? When you go, oh, poor them, or, oh, that's why they're reacting that way, because they miss this piece. You're not seeing them. You're still seeing what the world has made them into, and you're missing the point, and they're not going to heal because you're not their witness. You know, and, and, and I've done this, so I know this from personal experience, but I've also had people see me and love me, because love is critical here, right? If you witness something, and you have knowledge about something, and you only have knowledge and no love, you're going to judge. But when you have knowledge and love, you're gonna understand, and there's the difference. So I'm looking at Mr. Goldbottom, I see his spirit, he sees mine. I'm just witnessing the facts of what has broken in him, and I can see that because I can see the outside shell. So, but I'm not actually paying attention to the outside shell, I'm actually paying attention to the crack in between. Well, why would I do that? The outside shell can be put back together, or maybe it can't, like in these little pieces where a whole new piece had to be put there, you know, and I had to create that piece to go there. But what's in between? Gold. Okay, because when you 
and somebody else witness in agreement and we're going to go to that scripture where two or more are gathered together in my name i will be there is what i believe it is where t- but a lot of people use this in a very destructive way this verse in a very destructive way and i think it's really meant to heal not to just cast people out of the community okay so in matthew 18 20 i believe is where it's at let me read the whole chapter this is i don't want the new international well it's not it's not letting me hold on a second okay so matthew 18 20 um i'm going to start with uh dealing with sin in the church now this is a a whole section i'm going to read it just because i want context but go back and read matthew 18. if your brother or sister sins go and point out their fault just between the two of you hey what's going on see there's a brokenness people don't sin unless something's wrong okay a sin is a symptom so if you're just like oh you're a bad person guess what you're not really helping them because you're trying to point out the symptom because you know that hey you broke off this piece what's going on here i'm looking at the spirit not at the sin okay so we go go to the person and you deal with that and if they listen to you you have won them over but if they will not listen take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses if they still refuse to listen tell it to the church and if they refuse to listen even to the church treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again truly i tell you that if two or more of you on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them by my father in heaven but where two or three gather in my name there i am with them and i think this points back to the cherubim the cherubim are the his witness he is going to talk to moses there between the cherubim where two or more are gathered together in my name okay so we have to do that so when you're talking to somebody and they use this verse in my in my hit in my past and in in my experience people use this verse to justify throwing somebody out treating them like a tax collector well look if we say that they aren't doing what they're supposed to and we're both in agreement then what we bind on earth is bound in heaven so they're basically trying to take the power of condemnation for themselves and okay sort of but let me explain the context of how I see it. Okay, so if I went to Mr. Goldbottom and said, hey, Mr. Goldbottom, this is what's going on. You're broken here. What's happened? Let, let's, let me witness it. No judgment, nothing. Just, I love you. And he's like, no, you can't. You cannot see my, my stuff. I've done nothing wrong. Shame, 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 right? Because shame is condemnation, but guilt is correction. So, no, you can't see it. I didn't do anything wrong. You're wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Defensive, defensive, defensive. Blame shifting, all of these things. They refuse to see what's happening. And they're gushing, right? They're broken. And this is, they're broken. So you bring somebody else so that two witnesses can see it. And three, we want to give them a chance. But what do you think is going to happen when two people come and see somebody broken like this and not judge them? I have yet to experience that happen. I have yet to pray with somebody. I'm, I'm thinking outside of my children, if there's ever been a time that I have prayed with somebody in that way. And, and now in hindsight, I realize it's because you're talking to the flesh instead of to the spirit because you can't see the spirit. But I don't care about your flesh. I don't care what you've done. I don't care. All I want is for you to actually communicate with me. And if you do that, I'll walk through fire for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I will do whatever it takes if you're willing to communicate. If you reach out to me, I'll reach out to you. Why? Because that's what he did for me. But if you hide yourself and go, no, you can't see me. I won't let you because I'm so focused on the flesh, they've chosen the flesh. You can't force them to look at the spirit, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't. And a lot of the conflicts that I've had 
have happened because somebody is trying to force me to recognize their flesh and I refuse to do it. Right? So they're trying to tell me their lie, whatever, whatever this is. I don't care. I'm not paying attention to that. I'm not getting the muddy water muddied. Okay. I don't care. So you want to put that and hide that and refuse to let me see you just like God in the garden with Adam and Eve. No, I'm, I'm ashamed. Don't see me. What am I supposed to do then? I can't even have a relationship with you at that time. I can't communicate with you because you won't let me, right? That's what makes me a good communicator. It's because I'm talking to your spirit, not your flesh. And the flesh, it, it, it's not meant to be your identity. Oh, that's such a frustrating topic. And actually, this is what I wanted to talk about with Kintsuki more is the idea of identity. Because that has a lot to do with this, but I'm not going to talk about that right this second. Because it just doesn't apply. So, the point is that when you focus on the spirit, and they are focusing on the spirit, okay, what happens? If this person recognizes that this is broken, and I recognize that this is broken all too, but I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on this. I'm seeing how they are broken, right? In order to repair this, I have to actually see how it's broken. I have to see the crack. Not the piece, because that's what everyone gets hung up on. The pieces. When we break off pieces, guess what? This part of us is not here. It's a it's all discombobulated and they and then you do crazy things and people want to focus on the sin. I don't care about the sin. The sin has told me where the issue is. I care about the crack, right? What is this? So what did Paul say? And I believe it was Paul when he said, um, confess your sins to one another. And I want to bring up the verse because I don't want to, I don't want to haggle it. And I will. Okay, so James 5.16. It says, therefore, I'm using the, I'm going to go with the New King James. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effect and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Um... And then there's, I think there was another, another verse um, that's similar to that. But you get the idea. Um, I wish I had thought about this before I started making the video. I would have, <laughs> I would have said something else. Um, no, that that was it. I'm pretty sure that was the verse that I was referencing. So when you confess it, each other, you're being real. You're being honest. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm broken here, right? I'm broken in lots of places. And the more that I confess it, the more that he can be in the space between. Because if I'm here and you're here, okay, let's put it in this perspective, and you're not focusing here, right? Because this is the flesh, what's that? But you're broken, focusing here on the cracks and God will be in the midst of you, in between the cherubim's wings. You're a witness, they're a witness, Seeing it accurately, not forsaking the salt, being accurate with what you're seeing without judgment, but with love, he's going to be there. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to be in the crack. He's going to heal that crack. He's going to put it back together between the cherubim swings. It's power. I mean, the book that I wrote has a lot more to do with this concept. But, at least in, in regards to communication and kintsuki, I thought that that was the best way to explain this. So, how do you do kintsuki? I'm going to show you. And it's pretty easy. Um, I take some baking soda. Well, you don't have to do it this way. The, uh, the real way is to use lacquer, um, but you need to have humidity at a certain way. And it takes some time, and I'm just not gonna do that. You actually don't need a lot of baking soda for a small piece because you're basically gonna make concrete with the um, the super glue. So super glue and baking soda are amazing. I love them and now I can't quite open it. And actually I use the super glue uh, mix with Mr. Goldbottom. Only instead of using baking soda I used gold mica powder. So that's where you get that that color from. 
but I'm doing it a little differently this way. Um, I'm just going to use this to seal it and then I will paint that on top. So I squirt it into the dish and I make this little, um, this little plaster. You got to have to work um, fairly quickly because, because it dries pretty quick. So if you see it, it's, it's kind of clear and I just mix it together. And then I get this nice little paste. And again, you have to do it very quickly. And then I'm gonna glue it together. It also smells pretty bad. So, yeah, pretty bad. Actually, I'm gonna open the window. Okay, I opened the window. Forgive the sound of a raptor. It actually is a motion sensor that keeps critters out of my yard. Um, they hear it and they think, there's a bird of prey, which there actually might be because I have some falcons and hawks in the neighborhood. So I mix that together, working pretty quickly. And this is a little more critical when it comes to um, a, a part where you have to make almost a little cement. All right, I use a toothpick and I put that on there. And I'm just going to do that. Um, you kind of have to work quickly. And I just want you, I'm going to pause this for a second as I put that together so that you can... Um, not have to watch me put, do this. Okay, so I am done gluing this piece and mostly done gluing this piece and, and I'm going to start um, to uh, actually paint the piece, okay? Because there's still rough edges. There's still, you know, they're held together and when I did this one I actually had the same gold powder inside of them and I thought that was a little more, more um, symbolic because God's really what holds us together. He's the one who heals us and makes us into a new creation. Uh, so I liked the way Mr. Goldbottom was put together, but I didn't have the mica powder up here. So baking soap, that's what I used. So I'm going to find uh, some paintbrushes and actually my centerpiece at my house is usually paintbrushes and craft supplies. <laughs> so I'm going to use this little guy. It's a tiny little detail brush and you want something that you're going to be able to really get in um, into those, those spaces. And you want to shake up your um, liquid gold leaf if you're using that. If you're using a different method then you put the glue on and then you would put the um, gold leaf on and kind of brush it off. All right but uh, you want to shake it first. Now I will warn you I had to buy a new one of these because if you store it sideways, it will not, you are not able to open it again. Okay. What I ended up having to do was actually drilling a hole in the center of the last one I had just so I could get to it. So I bought a new one. I've learned my lesson. Okay. So I'm going to very carefully fill in the cracks because oftentimes um, you will have cracks left in the concrete that you use or whatever glue substance that you're using and it'll make it very rough. Now I have tried in the past and, and I've done this with other dishes where I've actually just overfilled the cracks and what happens then is that you just sand them down um, when uh, before you before you apply the gold leaf or whatever it is that you're applying. But in this case, I uh, think we did a pretty good job already. So we're just going to go ahead and, and do that. And then after I'm done, see how that's going to look all the way across. And I'll show you in a minute. Um, but when we're done, we'll put some um, sealer because this is not real gold. It will tarnish. It's got a, a lot of a copper base. So you're going to get a lot of tarnish on it if you don't seal it. So you definitely want to put some, a clear coat of, of poly, polyurethane or lacquer on top of it so that if it gets damp, it's not going to turn green. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've learned my lesson, but uh, it's still, it, it turns into a very pretty project, I think. Now, I would love to do it the oriental way. Oh, it would be so wonderful. But... I don't have the time or patience for that. Now, I will tell you that you could do this if you just like the look on something that's not broken. But 
then I'm like, eh, I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me. So, um, so just pointing these things out. So what is this really doing then when we add this to these pieces? Um, well, it's like in Romans when he writes uh, chapter 8, verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their mind set on the things of the Spirit. So what makes me a good communicator isn't that I am intelligent or that I have a good vocabulary or that I know how to get information out of people. It's that I am not focused on the things of this world. And because I am not... I can focus on what's inside of you. More importantly, where can I see the breaks? Now, when I talk about being living stones, and we're going to do that another time, I'm going to talk about identity probably then, but when we talk about that, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more of what I'm talking about. Because we really, God wants us to be whole. He doesn't want us to be in fragmented pieces or have a divided spirit, he wants us to be whole and or a divided heart. And he's gonna hold us together. And in our weakness, we'll see him because that's what we're seeing here. When we see him in the space between, the cherubim's wings, right? The space between me and you. And we're both looking at the same thing, knowing he's gonna be there, knowing he's gonna heal you, praying, witnessing each other. He's gonna show up. And this beautiful, this beautiful pattern here, that's him. I love Kinsuki, right? I want to see your brokenness. I want to see how broken you were. Not that I'm happy that you're broken. I'm not. But I do love to see him. So I'm going to finish this and show you at the end. Okay, so I'm I'm back, <laughs> and I finished. Now I will warn you that this stuff does smell pretty bad too, so you probably want to you know um, do that in ventilation as well, and make sure you store it sitting up. You're not going to be able to open it. Trust, okay? And I'll probably put some um, maybe some envelope in that. Okay, so this is the finished project piece. You know, this one didn't have a huge break in it, just a little bit. And then this little guy, you can hardly see that one on the side, but you can you can see where, where that's at. And it's, it's done. Um, I do have to put a clear coat on it, which shouldn't take me very long, but I got to let that cure for a little bit. So we talked about looking at the things of the spirit and not being distracted by the things of the flesh, which is really hard to do. Okay, it's very hard to do. And I, I get distracted a lot. <laughs> but I try. We all are trying here, and that's all we can ever expect for each other. We're human, right? So I wanted to talk about this one last thing. And this is in the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 2, verse um, 13. Okay. For my people have committed a double evil. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and dug cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that cannot hold water. Okay. Can you hold water when you're broken like this? But this is what we want. We want to build our lives around the identity of the world and our identities in the world. I'm a woman. Right? This is what I just talked about. Women who, what are they going to be like when they die? If they've been married seven times, who's their husband? Because it's what's inside. That's really the point. Okay, so we've built our lives around this crack. And, oh, I'm a survivor of this. Or, you know, I'm a massage therapist, which I am. I'm a homeopath, which I am. I'm a mother, which I am. That doesn't mean anything. I'm building cisterns that can't hold water because I'm focusing on the flesh. 
I'm focusing on all of these cracks and I'm doing that to other people and building them too that way. Well, I try not to do that, but you know, we do that when we drink each other. And when we do that, we can't hold water because we're broken. We're broken. But the fountain of living water, him, when his spirit's in us, and we witness and we can be healed, but when his spirit's in us, I just want you to think about this. This is so beautiful. What I love about this. Fountains of living water that will never end. Just overflowing. Even a broken vessel can have water, an endless spring in them. Because even if they lose some, it don't matter. Right? I'm not saying that he's going to leave us broken. But even Paul, I think, he asked the Lord to deliver him from that thorn in his side. And it was what? My grace is sufficient for you, I believe, is what it says. Um, sometimes he leaves us that way. I don't understand it all the time. I'm not going to ask because he has a good way of teaching me. <laughs> if I ask the question, I'm a little bit... A little bit nervous. Uh, um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Um, or 12, 8 and 9. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away. Well, let's go back one. Um, seven. Uh, and lest I should be exhausted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Three times... Or concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is a beautiful piece, isn't it? It's nice, right? It looks pretty. It matches the gold and everything that's actually kind of in the back of the vase, so you really don't see it too much. But how glorious is Mr. Goldbottom! <laughs> Can't you see so much more of God? If this was representative of, of God holding us together and being there in our weakness, right? <laughs> He's with the brokenhearted. He's with the brokenhearted. So I'd rather boast in what he's done in my life, my testimony, because that reflects him. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to put it under a basket. I'm going to let everybody see it, right? But that's not what we do. We build cisterns that hold no water because we want this. We want to be this, not realizing that what we really are anyway communication you want to communicate well stop talking to the flesh and start talking to the spirit 